Gary, Paul, and Alon. These are just a few of the many rivals in Ash Ketchum's rogues gallery. After exploring and battling in over eight different regions, Ash Ketchum has had some great rivals and some not so great rivals. He's had rivals that are friends and he's had rivals that are jerks. If a rival is done correctly, it can greatly enhance the story in a particular series and add a great deal of substance and stakes to a Pokemon battle. So today, I'm gonna be ranking every single Ash Ketchum rival from worst to best. But before I begin today, I think it's important to explain the criteria for this video. First and foremost, to qualify in my opinion as a rival, you had to have battled Ash at least two times or more in a respective series. Yeah, I'm just not gonna be counting those couple of trainers that appear just before the regional leagues. So sorry to guys like Harrison, Tyson, and even Tobias. And also, for this video, the rankings won't strictly be based on the rival's battling prowess, but also their narrative relevance, motivations, and character overall. Alright then, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Coming in dead last is Conway. Conway is just straight up unlikable. He's just about the closest thing in the anime to a real-life competitive Pokemon player, so I can understand why he's so hated. He was one of the minor rivals for Ash during the Diamond and Pearl series, but he did actually battle Ash twice, so he does qualify here. But beyond just being a big weird dork, there wasn't all that much to his character. His battles with Ash were actually pretty fun though. Their first matchup was actually a double battle, with Ash and Paul taking on Conway and Don. Now Conway and Don actually worked pretty well together in this double battle, and they had some solid strategies. However, the two simply paled in comparison to the likes of Ash and Paul. But then, ultimately Ash and Conway squared off in the third round of the Sinnoh League, and again, this battle was actually a ton of fun. In an earlier training episode, Conway was actually spying on Ash to see who he would use in their upcoming battle. Only for Ash to say, Psych! That's the wrong number! <laughs> Now in this battle, the Pokemon matchups were great, and it was especially cool to see Trick Room actually used for the first ever time in the anime. Conway's strategies really put Ash on the back foot. Overall, Conway added a pretty fun and strategic spin to the Diamond and Pearl series, but it was his personality that made him so unlikable. He was just a weird dude. Next up, in 13th place, is Howe. Now I'd argue that no rival on this entire list got done as dirty as Howe. The big problem with him is that he was just added too late into the series, and he never really got to become much of a character. He was basically just one small step above one of those last second league rivals. There actually could have been a decent amount to explore with Hao, seeing as he is the grandson of Hala. But instead, he basically just is an Alola version of Richie from the original series. And by that, I mean he just uses similar Pokemon to Ash. The big battle I'll be discussing for this entry is Ash and Hao's clash in the quarterfinals of the Alola League. Now at first, this battle was really solid, but I just didn't like the ending of it. The whole Rowlet not being knocked out, but instead just being asleep thing just doesn't sit right with me. I honestly feel for Howe after he lost this battle, especially because it was his grandpa of all people that objected the call. Overall, I can't help but feel sorry for Howe, but between being shoehorned into the show and being done dirty by his own grandpa, it was just a rough time in the Alola series for Howe. Next up is Nando. Now, Nando's a very interesting character because he works as a rival for both Ash and Dawn in the Diamond and Pearl series. And while yes, Nando may just be another minor DP rival like Conway, there's just so much more to him. Let's just start with his appearance. Of all of Ash's rivals, I'd say none are drippier than our boy Nando here. I also believe that Ash had a major influence on Nando when he was deciding on what goals he wanted to pursue. It was only after a great battle with Ash that he decided he would participate in both battles and contests. After a bit of a break from battling to instead focus on contests, he ultimately squared off with Ash in the first round of the Sinnoh League. And I actually found this battle to be very underrated. Staraptor vs. Roserade was exciting, and Ash even used his newly evolved Quilava, but the epic bug finale between Heracross and Krikatoon was the best of the best, and it's actually aged incredibly well. I mean, just look at these visuals and animations. They look worlds better than most of the Masters 8 battles. I can also tell that Nando had a ton of respect for Ash. After Ash got the better of him in the Sinnoh League, he faced his loss with humility and even thanked Ash for a really good battle. I really like Nando, and he was a solid minor rival for Ash, but if we had got a bit more of him interacting with Ash, there's no doubt that he would have been much higher on this ranking. At 11th place on today's list is Ash's main rival in Unova, Trip. 
Trip had the very unfortunate job of following up one of Ash's greatest rivals ever, and instead of making Trip his own unique character, the writers basically just made him Paul, but much worse. He is constantly talking down to Ash just like Paul, but unlike Paul, Trip is a newbie trainer who has taken losses to the likes of Bianca and Silent. And what's really weird is we didn't even get to see that much from Trip's Pokemon team either. He did have a full team of six, but besides Superior and Conkeldur, all of his other Pokemon were not fully evolved. And when it comes to Trip's battles with Ash, they were kind of weird. Obviously, there's the infamous battle at the beginning of the series when Trip's brand new Snivy took down Ash's Pikachu, who had just tied a Latios a few episodes earlier. But by now, I don't think much needs to be said about that one. It's probably the most disrespectful battle in the history of the Pokemon anime. The two then had a couple of okay battles during the rest of the series, but their big, ultimate, final showdown culmination match came in the Unova League. But unlike all of Ash's other rivals, this matchup came in the first round of the Unova League, and it turned out to be a very lackluster 1v1 battle. The battle itself was alright, I guess. Pikachu had a pretty creative move combination to win, but this was just not the way to cap off the story of the main rival in a region. It almost feels like the Pokemon writers gave up on Trip in this series. Now let's move on to the black and white rival I prefer much more, Stefan. Stefan is much more likable and overall much more entertaining to see on screen, especially when compared to Trip. He's an upbeat, optimistic, and exciting character, and what I really like about him is how he was able to pull off that friendly rival stereotype to near perfection. He was also a pretty funny character with the ongoing joke about others mispronouncing his name. I actually think Stefan is a much better version of Morrison from the Advanced series. Now Stefan's battle with Ash in the Unova League is actually my favorite matchup in the entire Black and White series. You can skip through the entire Unova anime, but if you just watch this battle, you'll be pretty satisfied. The climactic battle between Crocodile and Sock is among the best 1v1s in all of Pokemon. Stefan is certainly the best of the best when it comes to Unovan rivals for Ash. It's just too bad he was in such a bad series. Next up, we've got the lone female rival on this list, B. Let me begin this entry by saying this. B is just straight up awesome. In the 25 years of Ash in the anime, there was never really a legitimate and worthy female rival to Ash up until B came along. Well, yes, I'll admit she might have not been that deep of a character. She was certainly an intimidating threat to Ash. For most of Pokemon Journeys, Ash was kind of just cruising through the World Coronation series. That was until Ash's first normal class battle with B. And in this battle, she absolutely bodied Ash. She swept through Ash and his fighting types and handed him his first loss of the PWC. Then the two second battle isn't great, it kind of just ends with a tie, and Ash didn't even use Farfetch'd in this match. But then, their final battle was actually so epic and pretty satisfying. This matchup took place in the Ultra Class after a long break between their previous matchup. Now, for some reason a lot of people don't really like this battle, but me, I absolutely loved it. In my opinion, this battle was among the best in all of Pokemon Journeys. After a lot of training, evolutions, and growth, Ash and his Pokemon were finally able to get the better of the imposing B. I mean, B was actually so imposing, it forced Ash and Lucario to seek even more power by finding Lucario's Mega Stone. And it was in this battle that we actually got the big debut of Mega Lucario, and it was pulled off perfectly. This was also the first time we ever saw a Gigantamax go up against a Mega, and it blew my mind. And while yes, B didn't really challenge Ash on multiple levels like some of his other rivals, she definitely challenged him physically. And with her being a macho fighting type specialist, I think this actually works well for her. In 8th place on today's list is Kiawe. Kiawe might just have the most interesting relationship with Ash when compared to every other rival on this list. Kiawe was a classmate, companion, friend, and rival to Ash. Early on into the Sun and Moon series, Kiawe was labeled as the strongest in the trainer school. And when you look at his Pokemon team, it's not surprising as to why. Kiawe's competitive nature was also very similar to Ash's as the two were always training and pushing each other. The only real fault I have with Kiawe is how he never got a real major official battle with Ash. Kiawe kind of got the unfortunate treatment of being fodder in the league to the main rival of the series. Still though, I really liked Kiawe in the Sun and Moon series, and he really helped push Ash to be a better trainer, which is what a good rival should do. From the side Alolan rival to the main Alolan rival, in 7th place is Gladion. 
Though he may seem like nothing more than an emo edgelord, there's much more than meets the eye to Gladion. Gladion works as a sharp contrast to the rest of the Alola gang, as he is a much more serious and reserved character. So obviously, that really makes him stick out when compared to the rest of the cast. He isn't one to wear his emotions on his sleeve like Kiawe would, especially with respect to his sister. I think Gladion's growth as a character in this series is shown perfectly through his signature Pokemon, Silvalli. It began as the Chimera-type experiment from the Aether Foundation, and later on evolved into the legendary Silvalli, which of course is only possible through high friendship. This evolution just so happened to have occurred while saving both Lily and Ash. Gladion also might have the coolest Pokemon team of any of Ash's rivals. He of course also had a very powerful Midnight Form Lycanroc, the same Lycanroc who worked as both a rival and mentor to Ash's Rockruff and later on Lycanroc. This ultimately led us to the finals of the Alola League, where after an awesome first two rounds, it concluded with a Lycanroc v Lycanroc finale, and I think we all remember how that ended. Gladion was the perfect rival for Ash in the Sun and Moon series. As a character, he's amazing and has so many layers. Just about any time he was on screen, he stole the show for me, and I loved seeing him returned in Pokemon Journeys. In 6th place, we have none other than the former World Monarch himself, Leon. With Leon, there's not really all that much to his character beyond him just being strong, which isn't really the worst thing ever, but it definitely makes him pretty boring. However, when it comes to raw power, Leon is second to none. Well, actually scratch that, he's now second to Ash. But regardless, Leon is easily the most powerful trainer on this list. Now, some of you may be thinking, is Leon really even an Ash rival? Yes, I believe he is, and he does battle Ash more than once. Even if one of their matchups was kind of a one-sided, unfair match. Still though, Leon was the ultimate goal for Ash in the entire Pokemon Journey series. It was all leading up to that big final battle between Ash and Leon in the finals of the Masters 8. For basically the entirety of Journeys, Ash was always looking up to Leon, like Leon was some big superhero. And I guess when it comes to the Pokemon universe, he kinda was. This Ash and Leon rivalry can somewhat feel one-sided, but that isn't necessarily all that bad. Leon was the immovable object in Ash's way of his ultimate goal that was established decades ago being the very best like no one ever was. The way Leon was built up in Journeys was absolutely no joke, and I'd even argue that the writers went a bit overboard by having him more or less sweep through the other champions of the Masters 8. This rivalry culminated in the Masters 8 finale, with Ash taking on Leon, and this battle, this battle was perfect. From the stunning visuals, to the stakes, to the emotions, I literally still get chills to this day when I rewatch this battle, especially during that climactic 1v1. And while yes, Leon was somewhat a hollow character, he pushed Ash to be the very best, like no one ever was. In 5th place, we have probably the most underrated character in the entirety of the Pokemon anime, Sawyer. Now remember in the previous entry when I said that Ash was always looking up to Leon like he was basically a superhero? Well here it's a very similar relationship with Sawyer, but instead he's looking up to Ash in the same respect. And while he was only a rookie trainer, his intellect and knowledge help him catch up to Ash very quickly, and then by the 8th gym, Sawyer outright surpassed Ash. This ultimately led to Ash suffering an embarrassing loss to Sawyer. At the time, Ash was over-reliant on the Ash Greninja form while not truly understanding it and its power. This loss was important to Ash as it forced him to reassess who he was as a trainer and it ultimately helped him in mastering the Ash Greninja form. This all came to a head in the semi-finals of the Kalos League when we got the final showdown between Ash and Sawyer in an epic 6 on 6 battle. Both of them were truly at the top of their game and finally fighting on even footing. Beyond just some stunning visuals, we also got to see the sharp contrast between the two's battling styles. But we all know how this matchup ended, with Mega Sceptile squaring off with Ash Greninja, the best grass starter against the best water starter. Once these two trainers accepted each other as equals is when this battle gets really good. The choreography and visuals of this final matchup are simply stunning. Seeing Ash Greninja weave through Sceptile's massive frenzy plan attack is epic, and it all comes to an astonishing conclusion when Ash and Greninja put everything they have into a massive water shuriken, resulting in a historic win for Ash. In fourth place is the Mask Royale, otherwise known as Kakui. Kakui's relationship with Ash is certainly unlike any other relationship on this whole list. 
Professor Kakui is essentially the closest thing Ash has to a father figure. I mean, in Pokemon Journeys, Kakui even tells his newborn son that Ash is his brother. While also being Ash's father figure, Kakui is also Ash's teacher, educating him in things like Alola's traditions, how to use Z-moves, and of course the legendaries of the Alola region. But then of course Kakui had his alter ego, which is the Mask Royale who, much like previously stated with Leon, was the big end goal boss battle of the series. These two finished off their friendly rivalry with an exhibition battle in the Alola League, and I find this battle to be just beautiful. What I admire most about this final battle is, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is literally just an exhibition match for fun. Win or lose, Ash will always be the first champion of the Alola League, and it's because of this that you can really tell that both Ash and Kakui are having a great time, but still going all out. I especially love seeing Melmetal vs Incineroar and Naganadel vs Lucario, and we even got the epic conclusion to the Toracat and Incineroar rivalry with one of the most epic and fiery matchups we've ever seen. But of course, the big finale of this fight is Pikachu taking on his own regional rival in Tapu Koko. This battle ended in one of the most dramatic finishes we've ever seen, with the ultimate Z-move clash, while Pikachu and Ash reflect on their time in Alola. Kakui is, and always will be, Ash's true dad, and thanks to him, Ash is the champion that he is today. Taking the bronze medal on today's ranking is Alon but I somewhat struggle with putting Alon here on this list because he's not even really Ash's rival. Because he owns Ash! But seriously though, Alon probably has the deepest storyline and most interesting past of any of Ash's rivals. So obviously Alon received his own miniseries focused all around the Mega Evolution phenomenon, and it's right then and there that Alon was established as being an incredible trainer, because he was taking on the likes of Elite Four members and legendaries. Then, he finally crosses paths with Ash. Then of course, we ultimately led up to the big Kalos League Finals. And this battle is just alright in my opinion. It's certainly the most controversial battle in Pokemon history, because, well, Ash loses. But that's not actually why I'm not that big of a fan of it. I don't love this battle, because it feels like it was kinda just in a rush to get to the final Charizard vs Greninja one-on-one. -on -one. This battle is actually only a two-parter, so it's a bit shorter when compared to some other big rival battles. Still though, it's stunning from a visual standpoint, and I find myself re-watching the Ash Greninja vs Mega Charizard X battle all the time. Which then brought us to the epic Team Flare arc at the end of XYZ. Ash helped inspire Elan to do the right thing and remind him that he wasn't a bad person. He was just confused. It's because of this that Alon goes out to seek a fresh start and find his own Mega Keystone for Charizard. I really wish Ash could have gotten the opportunity to run it back against Alon in Pokemon Journeys. We all know that that would have been a much better Round 1 matchup instead of Ash vs Steven, and definitely better than Alon vs Leon. Now in second place is Paul, easily Ash's meanest, blunt, and terrifying rival ever. Right from the start of the Diamond and Pearl series, we come to meet Paul, and right away we learn about him and what he believes in. Paul had just as much experience as a trainer as Ash, because he had previously traveled through the exact same regions as Ash. Paul would constantly put down both Ash and his training methods. And then when the two squared off in Lake Acuity, Paul's beatdown on Ash sent him into a deep depression. This one-sided bashing was something we had never seen before in the Pokemon anime. However, it was exactly what Ash needed. Now what makes this rivalry so sweet is Chimchar and ultimately Infernape. While under Paul's ownership, Chimchar's strength and Blaze ability was never able to reach its full power, but then, when Ash took Chimchar in, he finally understood what it meant to be cared for, and even loved. Now many believe Ash and Paul's Sinnoh League battle to be the best in all of Pokemon, and it's here that their differences in ideologies and strategies were put on full display. This battle had some crazy twists, like Paul having Ash gain a big lead so he gets complacent, only to have him use his OP Drapion to destroy half of Ash's team. But of course, the big moment of this matchup was Infernape, with Infernape squaring off in a 1v1 with Electivire, who was basically a rival in and of itself. Once Electivire landed that point-blank, devastating thunder attack, many lose hope, only for an absolutely spine-chilling moment to occur. I just love it. Once Infernape's Blaze is activated, you know both he and Ash are fully locked in. You can feel the rage, 
anger and resentment behind all of Infernape's attacks. It was time for both him and Ash to prove their strength to the rival who had constantly put them down. And after an epic Flare Blitz Thunder Punch collision, that's exactly what they did. A perfect ending to a perfect rivalry. Paul was also the perfect character to come back during Pokemon Journeys. It was great to see Ash catch up with him, and you could tell that Paul had finally respected Ash. I also think that Paul's tough love is exactly what Ash needed before the Masters 8 tournament. But coming in first, you already know who it is. Yeah, it's Gary, the OG rival. So what makes Gary so special and what helps him top this list is his relationship with Ash. Gary was there from episode 1 all the way up to episode 1223, which was Ash's last ever episode. I find it to be incredibly fitting that Gary and Ash's rivalry saw its climax in the Johto League. You see, if Ash had fought Gary in the Kanto League, he would have had zero chance. While this Johto League matchup might have not aged all that well, at the time, this was the cream of the crop when it came to Pokemon battles. It was awesome to get to see all of Gary's Pokemon perform, and Ash's certainly didn't disappoint either. Especially Charizard, who took down three of Gary's strongest Pokemon. This battle truly did bookend the original series, as it showed Ash grow from the little kid who was late to getting his starter, to surpassing Gary altogether. Luckily for us, Gary wasn't just a one and done rival. He made a ton of other appearances, like when he helped take down Team Galactic and Hunter J in Sinnoh. But my favorite return of Gary came at the end of the Advance series. Ash had just finished conquering the Battle Frontier, and back at Professor Oak's lab, he ran into Gary, and naturally the two squared off in a battle. A battle in which Gary and Electivire schooled Ash and Pikachu. Yep, leave it to Gary to put Ash right back in his place after he's riding incredibly high. But this battle was actually very important to Ash, as it taught him that there's always someone out there who's gonna be stronger than him. And I'd venture to say that no other character in Pokemon was more influential on Ash than our boy, Gary Oak. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. This one was a ton of fun to make, but you gotta let me know what you think of these rankings, and what changes you would make. Thanks guys!